Now, I, I like chatting to you because whenever we talk to you, it's mm -hmm. always about making money with property. I like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the first <laughs> one we want to talk about is, mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably a more obvious one, yes. and that's income, getting income from a property. Talk to us about that. Yes, so when you buy, as an investor, you buy a buy-to-let. So the aim of a buy-to-let is that you can make money out of it, uh, like you correctly said. So one of the first ways, an obvious one, is to rent out your property. So if you rent it out, you're going to be able to get rental income. In addition to that, Cornelius, is that if you s uh, have a lease agreement where you say to the tenants, you must also pay for, for water, or you must also pay for electricity, or just putting a prepaid um, electricity, you are able to recover some of, the, of that electricity. It's going to be part of your income. If there's water, you are able to recover some of that water as well, will form part of your income as well. And I suppose the golden rule here with, with the income strategy is that you have to make sure that you have positive cash flow. Yes. Talk to us about that. Yes. So um, the positive cash flow means your rental income plus any of the recoveries that I mentioned, whether from electricity or from, from water or any other utilities, minus all your expenses. So you take your rental income minus all your expenses, which will include your bond, if you're in a complex, your levies, if you've got any insurance, you deduct that. Then whatever is left must be positive for you to be able to say, I have an investment, therefore I've got a positive cash flow every month. Great. Now, the second way how, how we can make money with one single investment property is through capital growth. Yes. Talk to us about that. Yes. So capital growth means you buy a property today. Um, let's say, for example, we're buying a one million rent property. If you hold it over a period of time, uh, if you are in a good uh, if you're in a good uh, good area, most of the properties can double in ten years time. So, in other words, uh, you buy a property today. In ten years time, you've got a property worth two million rent. So, your capital growth for that one million rent property will be the one million rent. Okay. And, and because of that growth, you now have access to funds. You've got access to equity. You can even go to a bank and access that funds and put it somewhere else. You can put it in a, another property or you can renovate your property or you can do something else that could help you to grow your property portfolio. But you will have access to one million rand because of the capital growth. So you now have an income every month. Yes. After a couple of years, you can take equity out of the bond. There's more money. Uh -huh. Third one is tax deductions. Talk to us about that. Ooh. I think that one, um, um, Cornelius, most people actually do miss out on it. If you've got an investment property and then you, uh, you would have uh, expenses such as your levies, you'd have expenses such as your electricity, your water, and any maintenance cost. So, for example, people get to miss. If you've got a standalone property where you've got, let's say, a gardener coming in and cutting your grass every weekend, that expense is actually deductible for tax purposes. Okay. So any other maintenance that you do on the property, you are able to deduct for tax purposes. But how does that help you? How does that put money in your pocket? So let's say you've got a salary. You get paid 10000 rand from your own salary. And because you are an investor, you hold that property in your own name. Then if you take your rental income, you minus your expenses. If you are making a loss from that, so now you've got rental income minus those expenses. If you're making a loss, you are able to deduct that loss from your normal taxable income. So at the end of the year, when you are filing for your uh, uh, for your tax returns, mm -hmm. SAS is going to give you a tax refund. So that's another way that if you don't miss expenses, you deduct all the expenses, you can end up having money in your pocket at the end of the month. You just need to make sure that you keep all those invoices and slips and you must have proof. You must have proof. You must have proof. People must, must just get into the habit of, I just do it like, like a simple Excel spreadsheet, for example. Mm -hmm. So on a monthly basis, you put in your rental income minus that expense for the month. You do it over a 12-month period. So and then, you, then at the end of the 12 months, so which runs from March of every year, remember? March mm -hmm. every year up until February of the following year. So you need to keep all your income and all your expenses, you keep proof. You don't have to keep proof for every slip, but the way the deductions work for tax purposes is that you have to show 
Um, if you've got a, let's just take a simple one, like a gardener, for example. Yes, yes, for yes. that expense, you, you need to make sure you pay them from your bank account. You have to show that money flew out of your account, so that okay. you did spend that money. If you've got levies, for example, you only have to show just one month statement. So you attach the one month statement just to prove how much the levies are. Same thing with your rates and taxes. You can deduct them. You just have to show you attach only one month statement, but you're going to show a 12 month spreadsheet. You, ju you just have to show and attach all the proof and then SAS will be happy. I love it. Pay your taxes, <laughs> but you don't have to tip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, now, Doris, the next one is that you can also buy under market value. Oh, that's my favorite one because what does that mean for an investor? It means an investor makes money when they buy. Because if you go, let's say a property, we back to the 1 million rent property, is on the market for 1 million rent, you negotiate 20%. Uh, discount and you buy it for 800,000. What does that mean? It means from day one you've made 200,000. If you buy at market value, it means you've got what we call an immediate equity. Okay. So you've made money when you when you were buying, not when, when, not when you were selling. So by buying below market value, you get an immediate equity of 200,000, even if it's just 10%. So yeah. if the property is worth 1 million rand and you say, um, when you negotiate for a 10% discount, from day one, you're gonna have 100,000 of equity. So, so that means for a million rand property, you pay 800,000 rand, and immediately after it's registered on your name, name, you can go back and refinance and stake that extra 200 100%, out. 100%. And now you have 200,000 rand. So if, if you put in a deposit, you've just immediately taken out all your deposit and more. Yes, 100%. That's exactly how you... So the, 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 the ideal way of doing it, even to make it so that it is, is cost less for you, is that if the property is worth 1 million rand, but you manage to buy it, so your purchase price is now 800,000. You can actually register a bond for 1 million rent. Uh, you don't have to register the bond for 800,000 rent. Why? Because when you refinance, then there's no bond registration costs. Oh, so okay. So, so yes. now I understand. So you, you okay, you, you uh, uh, register that, you apply yes. for the full million rand up front. No, you don't apply for the full million rent. Your bond still gets, so you've got, remember, you, you can register a higher bond than what the bank is going to give you. Yes. The bank will only give you the 800,000 purchase price. Okay. But your bond registered at the deeds office okay. says 1 million rent. Your bond repayments every month are going to be based only on the 800,000 rent. But the reason why you register a higher bond is so that you can have access to that funds when you need it. You just have to go to the bank and you refinance, then you don't have to pay additional bond registration costs. Because if you only register the bond for 800000 when you want to go back and then access that 200000 you're going to have to pay the attorneys to register ah. another bond for 200000 You can actually ask the bank to register any amount, like you can say 1.2 or 1.5, but you'll only pay bond repayments. But the bank will never give you more than the market value, obviously. Yeah. But by registering a higher bond, so that when the, even when the property grows in, in market value, value you can go keep on accessing and refinancing without having to pay bond registration costs this is very exciting i know <laughs> i know <laughs> so the the fifth one how yes. we can make money with one single investment property is through leverage yes talk to us about that so leverage just means that instead of using your own money you can go to a bank and buy the property. So let's, let's say the one million rent. If you, um, I think at the moment for a, you gotta earn 36,000 rents, you know, to qualify for a one million rent bond. Mm. So if you only earn 36,000 rents, for you to save one million rent, <laughs> it <laughs> might take you more than the 20 years <laughs> that you're gonna need to pay for the bond. But leverage means you are actually using debt to be able to acquire the, the, the property. So if, if you do uh, like we do when we say you, you are buying and making sure that your rental income is going to be able to cover all your expenses, all you're doing is that you use the bank's money and it costs you nothing because you have a tenant that is now paying for your bond. So that, that's how we're talking about leverage, is that it's a good thing to leverage when you're going to get income that is going to be paying off your debt. But that's not it. You know, I always have something <laughs> under my sleeves, right? The other thing that leverage does for you is that every single year, your bond gets amortized. 
Okay. Your bond reduces every single year. Then your, 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 your market value for the property does like this. Goes up. Yes. So what happens is that your wealth grows in between. As your bond goes down and the value of your property goes up, the value of your wealth grows. Your, your net worth. Your net worth. That's how you grow your net worth using a single buy to let. Oh, wow. Doris, I love how you always come on the show and you empower us to create wealth for ourselves. Thank you so much for your time. Cornelius, it's a pleasure.